So we're going to talk about this this morning. An old familiar story that the Lord gave us. Found in Mark chapter 12, verse 41. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. He sat where he could see where the offering was, where they were collecting it. And he beheld or saw the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. Man, the offerings were looking good. Verse 42. And there came a certain poor widow. And she threw in two mites, which make a farthing, not much. Jesus called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast in to the treasury. For all they did cast into the, of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. She put everything she had into the Lord's work. Many people never understand that life itself is about giving and receiving. Because we're all recipients of the thing we call life. I heard uh, Kathy Lee Gifford, who was a TV announcer for years, retired. They were interviewing her this week. And she's a strong Christian now. And she said, if you got pulse, you got a purpose. Meaning God has a purpose for your life. But some avoid church because of the subject of giving. It's sad, isn't it? Face reality. We've had these TV preachers for years that have taken advantage of the public. They've taken advantage of the people's ignorance. Ignorant means not to know something or to ignore something. But they've taken advantage and some of them have gotten quite rich and we hear about those guys and gals. There are some to be included in the, that category today. But the Lord said here, as he observed, he saw a lot of people give a lot. Because they had a lot. But many people gave much then. And I wrote it down. I've got uh, notes here. 1997, September, uh, 22 years ago now, a fellow by the name of Ted Turner. I hadn't heard much about it lately, but Ted Turner announced that he was giving one billion dollars of his fortune to charity to help out those less fortunate. And at that time in '97, that left him with 2.2 billion dollars. How many of us could make it on that? <laughs> he was also calling on other people that had a lot, uh, Ted Turner, I mean. He was calling on others to do what he was doing, to give to the needy. And during that time, this is over 20 years ago, Several had already, they said, bequeathed or left their fortunes to charity after their death. 
after they could not use it anymore. The sad part about it, when you do it that way, you'll never get to see the blessings that other people receive through what you left. Why, well, it's better to go ahead and give it, isn't it? But giving is much more than money. Much more. A while back, I read about a case where there was three men, old men, received new life from a 21-year-old man. One got his heart, one got his liver, another got a kidney. Because this man was killed accidentally, his family actually was the one that gave his organs or his body to science. And folk, you can't give any more than that. Uh, Linda and I were to my doctor day before yesterday, Friday, and the doctor uh, mulling over wanted to give me a transplant take a cornea from another body, place it where I can see. 1964 was the first time that ophthalmologists suggested that. But it would be a blessing to remove that scar tissue where one could see better. But I told the doctor, as long as I can see pretty good out of this one, we're going to leave this one alone. But what a blessing it would be if someone else left me their cornea. They're not going to need it anymore. Or help one see. By the way, it, uh, I understand it's on the back of your driver's license. If you want your body to go to help someone else, then you can do that. My sister that died two years ago, Gave her body, and her husband did likewise just a few months prior to her passing. They gave the body to science to help someone else. And folks, you can't give any more than all you got, <laughs> can you? But some people do that ahead of time. They make plans. But giving... is what we all would like to be able to do. Well, let me tell you, you're able. When you meet someone on the street, give them a big old smile. Doesn't cost anything, does it? Matter of fact, they tell me it takes a whole lot less muscles to smile than it does to frown. So why don't you smile at somebody else's life? You pass in them maybe one time in eternity never to pass them again. You never know. Give them a handshake. Give them a word of encouragement. But in our text, God gave us this lesson on giving. Jesus saw them. He was there observing as they gave to the treasury. He always sees us, doesn't he? Doesn't matter where we're at. He sees us. He, he looks a little deeper than we do. He looks on the heart. Amen. And folks, that's where giving should come from, is from the heart. Be thankful that you're able to give. Jesus saw this poor woman, this widow woman, as she gave her all. And our Lord honored her gift. Our text takes place about 2,000 years ago. 
Do you know how many millions of people have read about this woman in God's eternal book through the years? And when we get to heaven, we're going to meet this woman. She won't be a poor woman then, will she? Her gift was much more than Ted Turner gave. This woman realized that her everything came from God. And God saw it and blessed her for it. But let me say again, life is about giving. Pastor, my pastor, when I uh, surrendered to the ministry, going on 56 years ago now, had a favorite saying, and he put a sign up in front of the church. Don't give till it hurts. Give till it helps. That's a pretty good saying, isn't it? God wants your time, your greatest gift. God wants your affections. Look at your last verse on your page. My favorite verse in all the Bible about giving. When the, they were gathering the material to build the temple for God. Our text takes place in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 14. David said, But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, Lord, and of thine own. Have we given thee? It is already. <laughs> and we're able to give it back to him. And if you read the whole chapter there, you find where King David was the prime giver. Folk, be glad that you can give. I'm going to ask you a question. Would you rather be the giver or the givee? The recipient. Some years ago, we had a man, a young man at the time, lived right over here on Camel Road. Thought many, many times. His name was Steve Wilson. He and his mother lived together back here. Mother always sat where Millie sat back there, right in that area. She took cancer. And we watched her Sunday after Sunday as the cancer took hold and literally chewed her ear off over here. She died leaving her son. Her son was born with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy has an open spine. And it left him like this. He had to get around. He walked like this to where he was going. Called me one day, said, Brother Cobb, could you give me after his mother had died? He called me one day and said, could you give me a ride to the bank? I said, Steve, I'd be glad to. I pulled up to the bank down here on 290 at the time. It was called the, the gross, forgive me. He was going in to take care of some business there, but it was uh, 
Randall's. Y'all remember Randall's? You don't see them around here now much. But down on 34th and 290, I believe that was a location. He got out. I parked in a place for handicap. I didn't have a handicap sticker. I saw the lawman run up there right quick, and he was waiting on me to, to get out. He realized when Steve got out, dragging that body the way he was, he saw that right quick. He got lost. <laughs> he did not see a tag. He saw a man. <laughs> but I got to thinking about it. me being able to help Steve out. And I helped him a time or two, many times, actually. I'm glad that I was able to help him. I'm glad he wasn't the one having to help me in that condition. Matter of fact, after he died, his mother died. He, matter of fact, he lives down at Pearland now. Haven't had contact with him in a while. But after his mother died, our church secretary at the time, uh, Pat Schumann, who's passed away now, she saw him in his condition out there, trying to get from his house out to a little place where he washed his clothes at a washer and dryer out there, but they were a good piece from the house. And he had to drag his body down there to that to take care of his business because he lived alone. Y'all remember Marvin Zinner? Our secretary called Marvin Zinner. Marvin came out here in his white suit, white tie, with a Channel 13 crew. And they went over to Steve's house. Martin said, we're gonna get something done. And he got Steve a place built up next to his house where he didn't have to go way down to wash his clothes and so forth. And y'all saw him on, he was actually on there and he had pictures over to show Steve's plight. And he come out with this, Marvin Zindler, eyewitness news. <laughs> we heard that for years and years, didn't we? But the point I want to make was the Lord blessed me health-wise, and I was able to help Steve, rather than Steve have to help me. Now, I want to ask you, have you ever thought about it like this? God blesses us that we might be able to bless someone else or help them. Giving began with God. He is the author of giving. How'd y'all get here? Well, your mom and dad had something to do with it, didn't they? But God gave you the precious commodity called life. And folk, life embraces everything. Without life, you don't exist. And God gave you that life. Once again, Kathy Lee Gifford says, if you got pulse, you got a purpose. And you got a purpose, my friend. He gave us life, and we fouled it up. And then he gave us his son to show us how much he loved us. How many of you would give your son or your child for a bunch of sinners? God did. He's a measuring stick, isn't he? To pay our sin debt. 
And he gives us forgiveness through the blood of his only begotten son. And he gives us eternal life. You can't compare that to anything because there's nothing comparable to eternal life. I love that old song in the land where we'll never grow old. Where every day is going to be exciting because it's going to be with God our maker and our savior. We'll have plenty of time to catch up on what we've been wanting to do. <laughs> but once again, for emphasis sake, let's read that last verse and we're going to close. David said, but who am I? Who are we? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sword or this manner? For all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. Lord, I just gave you what you gave me to start with. You can't outgive God. When you give, it has a way of returning. Just keep your eyes open and see the hand of God. Don't be afraid to give. Give if you're able to give. And sometimes when you're not able, give anyway. That's what the woman did. She gave the last thing that she had. <laughs> Can you think about that? She had no other way. How was she going to pay her bills? Sad to say, but you know, and I'll, I'll say this, not having anything to do with my message, but I'll conclude. I've heard this week about two different former people that attended this church are both for threatening suicide. And they put it all on Facebook. At least one case. The other case, we found out through family that because of the financial situation they've gotten themselves in, they want to do that. Go get that gun. In both cases, it's a financial strain that they found themselves in a bind. And that's sad. We need to pray for people like that. Help them if we can. But some people, I see these people out on the streets. And I, uh, one day this week, I observed three different women in different locations around Spring Branch. Usually it was a man, but this time it was three different women. Now, all of them were, uh, I don't know how to term it, but all of them were mature. Probably 50, 60 was as young as I saw on the street. You're not going to help people by keeping them on the street. So most of the time, you're keeping them in their drug habit. The police have told us before, don't give to them. Don't yeah. let them uh, keep doing that because that's going to cause them to go ahead and continue it. A little bit earlier yet, but there's a lady down on them, a woman down yeah. on them. And this is this is different than the case and what you see. The lady down on where Kentwood runs into uh, Hempstead Highway. But right there, always there. She's sitting there with the son is just a baker. Her name is Tina. Tina had a house over off of Bingo, behind Fred's uh, station there. Everybody knows Fred. She 
therefore, man, glory, glory, glory. Right, right, where, she, right, where she lived, right back there. Tina had a house back there. She lived with her mother and her daughter. Her daughter was up in Colorado on a skiing event and got killed accidentally. This is the case of a mother losing a child. She lived with her mother until her mother passed away. <laughs> Tina couldn't take care of her personal affairs. So they packed people came and took her house. She got a van that she lived in a while. She lived in a van until they towed it away. She's an exception to what you normally see out there on the street. But Tina has come dependent on people uh, up and down the, to survive. There's other ways to do that. But she's become dependent on folks giving to her uh, by panhandling. But I say to you, don't give a panhandler. Give to somebody you know that needs some help. Amen. Uh, I think we're responsible as how what we give to. By the way, don't give to the place called Goodwill. Do not give to them. Mark Coran makes millions of dollars a year who is the CEO. That's a misleading name, Goodwill. You go in and give them this stuff and he sells it for profit. And helps no one. But people give to that thinking they're giving. The best place to give is to the Lord's work Amen. and his church. The best place. And let the church help out other people that need it. There's hardly a week passes that I don't get someone to call me and say, does your church have paid rent? Get that call on a regular basis. Some churches have gone together down here in Spring Branch and they got mounds down here. Y'all seen that down before, haven't you? Oh, yeah. You may have missed. Yeah. And uh, they try to have people, but they learned when somebody wants a utility bill paid or whatever to write it to that particular place. So they use it for that reason. Anyway, there's a lot we can say about giving. But the scripture teaches, give as the Lord gives to you. Amen. By the way, if you steal something, you don't want to steal from the Lord, do you? Anyway, may the Lord have his blessings to the thought of giving. There is a need for it because it's, it's about life. Help somebody else out along the way.